Oh no! I don't have my... G'day. Welcome to Mad Scientist Prospecting. My name's Stuart Chignall and welcome to the first episode in the fluid dynamics of prospecting. Now my knowledge of fluid dynamics comes from fish farming. Obviously very important to understand fluid dynamics when we're designing pipe networks and filtration systems and so on. Uh, but as much as I'm knowledgeable in that field, it's taken me quite a while to apply the theories I already know to a completely different practice with prospecting. So this video has been a while in the making, a while coming, but the series is ready to go. And we're gonna start things very simply at a very basic level. So even if you have no knowledge of fluid dynamics at all, you'll be able to come along on the journey with us. But if you, even if you do have a bit more knowledge about fluid dynamics, it's gonna be very important that you really get your head around the basics as a refresher course, because things are gonna get complicated more quickly and yeah, you'll need to be up to speed. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the relationship between the flow of water, the velocity of flow, and the cross-sectional area of flow, and how understanding how those three different attributes interact with each other really affects what happens with the flow of the water and particularly the entrainment of particles like gold within the flow. Now we're on to plan C with this video. I'd originally planned to start up in the center of town opposite the cathedral, beautiful setting. But the flow from the rain we had just a little while ago has already decreased and there's not enough flow up there to run the boats, which we're gonna be using to measure the velocity of the flow. So the second thing was to come down here and to show you the transition from high flowing water in the canal or the culvert to low, the lower velocity flow where we get into the, the earthen channel. But that's gonna be a bit tricky as well. So here's, this is what we're working with now and let's see how it goes. My three helpers here who are already wet, aren't you kids? Yeah. Okay. Up this way, so we wanna have the camera there. There. And it's going to be boats coming down there. That's right, okay. When I... Before we get started, we've got to measure. Oh, this is crazy. We've got to measure, we've got to measure a distance out, okay? All right, now that's 5.6 meters. Moray, can you bring the tape down here, please? Angus, please don't run like that. If you fall over, you'll really hurt yourself. I'm not running, okay? Great. On your mark. Get set. Go. Uh, uh, Alan, uh, Angus, Angus, get back. Get back. All right. I'm actually going really good. Yeah, here we are. Now, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Angus is in the lead. Yeah, here it is. It's passing this mark here now. Going down. Get, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, Angus. There. Right, stay there. Don't move. Right, now we're going there. Yeah, now okay, and now we're passing this last line here. Right, now you see on um, they're slowing down. Yes. They've really slowed down, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Angus is still in the lead. Angus is in the lead. Angus is Yeah, yeah, here they go. At this point the fluid dynamics calculations get a little harder. Yep, here they go. Oh! Not only do we have to calculate the velocity of the stick, otherwise known as a boat in this example, but then we also have to factor in the impulse force imparted to the water by Angus falling in and the effect that this would have on the motion of the boat. At this point, we decided that you probably got the idea and we can stop. However, we will be talking about impulse and force later. Not this video. Oh! All right, let's call that quits, shall we? So, Angus, uh, um, how are you getting home, mate? You, you're walking? No, uh, You're all wet. You're not getting in my car. I am. That's my car. It's my car. So the main thing I wanted to bring you here to show you was that change in velocity. Uh, that, that relationship between flow, velocity, and area. Now, in standard fluid dynamics texts, uh, that expression is written as Q equals VA. But as prospectors, the systems that we're looking at, like a creek or a sluice, the, the flow is going to be pretty much constant. Like if we go way upstream, it's probably going to go down. If we go downstream a ways, it's probably going to go up. But right here where we are, 
you know, the few metres downstream and the however far upstream we care about, that flow is going to remain unchanged. But what we care about is velocity, because it's the velocity of the water that indicates what is happening with the forces within the flow. And it's those forces that are involved in picking up gold when they are increasing and then dropping gold when they decrease. And so I hope you'll join me for the next episode where we're going to start, start talking more about what is producing that velocity. Because while the velocity increases when the area of flow constricts, it's not that area that produces the velocity. It's something else entirely. And we're going to be talking about that in the next episode. So I hope all that makes sense and I hope you join me for the next episode. Uh, if there is a question that you have, please, please ask it. Because if you've got it, odds on there's a whole bunch of other people that have the same question and you might just be the right person who's got the courage to, to, you know, to, to risk looking a bit silly and ask the question. There are no silly questions, so please, ask away. Now this series is starting slow, so if you think thought this episode was a bit, well, too simplistic, I've got to start at the bottom because when we, get into, when we start talking about some of the stuff we've got coming up, got to make sure everyone is on, uh, is on the same page. So, hope you enjoy, stay tuned, and I'll catch you later.